Welcome to today's Pump Fast Across the UK video. My name's James. Today we're going to be talking about tanks. Oh, it's going to be good fun. Hi guys, welcome to this plumberparts.co.uk video. My name's James. Today we're going to be having a look at the different types of hot water cylinder. This is for probably the homeowner or DIYer or someone who's thinking about what do I want or what is that thing in the cupboard. Hopefully this video is going to give you a little bit of a better idea. We're also going to look at four tick tanks. We've not looked at a four tick cylinder before. And also we're going to have a look at the different types of materials and just the different types of system and the way that hot water tanks can work. So I hope you enjoy this video guys. Please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like and please comment what you think of this video below. See you in the video guys and remember to hold tight. Health and safety guys, I know I'm wearing flip flops. It's the weekend. Uh, I've had a mad couple of weeks at work, outside of work. Lost a very dear mate over the last couple of days. So that's why I didn't upload last week. I didn't think it was appropriate to. And that's the same as well for the vlog channel. If you haven't followed that, check out at Times of James. I've got some great videos coming up very soon from Granada and loads from Bratislava. And I've got uh, a video series coming up there soon as well, which is all about a week in the life of a village cricket club. Everything from making the wickets all the way up to you know game day and uh, the beers afterwards, so there we go. So as you can see, we've got a few different types of tank here. This is what's known as a Fortic tank. We've got a little baby copper indirect cylinder here. All the cylinders that we've got here today, I think, are indirect. Yes, they are. But what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to talk to you um, about the difference between the two. So a vented cylinder like this here will have a hot pipe coming out of the top, just like so. We've got an immersion heater that goes in here. Just see an immersion heater as a massive kettle. Uh, but it's not hopefully going to heat the water up to 100 degrees. It's going to keep it around 55 degrees, which is kind of where we want it. Um, down the bottom here, we've got our in and out for our indirect coil, but I'll come to that in a second. And also on the other side as well, you'll find that we've got our inlet for our cold as well. All the tanks that we've got here today are made by Kingspan. Uh, they're pretty much the ones that I install and you're probably going to come across quite a few of them through your sort of daily work life. So a vented cylinder has water fed to it from a tank somewhere up there. So imagine up above me, we've got a tank in the loft, a plastic storage tank. It's gonna be about 40 gallons, um, and that is fed from the cold water mains, hopefully through a water softener, and the level in that tank is specified by the height of a ball valve. That's usually what we use to regulate water going in and out of that tank. Water comes out of the bottom of that tank and comes in at the cold feed at the bottom there. So when we open up a tap, what we're doing is we're displacing the water out of here with the water in the tank by allowing it to flow out of a tap. For example, we've got a tank full of water, we've got hot water here. At the bottom down here, it's cooler, and at the top, halfway up, I mean, it's hot all round, but there's a few degrees difference in temperature at the top because obviously heat rises. And that's actually a funny thing, the idea of the shape of these is to allow a convection up and down so you get reasonably equal heat, but nothing's perfect. So what happens is when we open up that tap, water is coming down from our tank into the pipe down at the bottom just down there, and it is displacing water, hot water, out of this pipe here and off out to our tap outlet, hunky-dory and brilliant. So that is what a vented cylinder does. We call it vented because we have a feed and expansion pipe. That's all in that pipe down there. And as you can see from the drawing that I've just been showing you, that's what the whole system looks like. So that's what vented cylinders do, okay? Unvented cylinders, like the one you see next to me here, do things in a slightly different way. Rather than feeding the cold water feed from a storage tank in the loft, they take their cold water feed directly from the cold water mains. So what happens is, is our main comes in here through what we call the balancing valve, which is very important. Also, I've done some videos on balancing valves as well. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. What happens at the balancing valve, I'll briefly describe it, is that it reduces and balances the pressure of the incoming main because we don't want this to be pressurized to 10 bar. That is a bad thing. But also we don't want our hot and colds afterwards because they're all gonna be on the mains, aren't they? To be of different pressures. We want them to be of same pressures. The reason because of that is because we often have mixer valves in houses, we have shower mixer valves, thermostatic valves, we have tap valves, you know, mixer ones on your kitchen sink, and we want those to have a similar pressure going to them so they don't function in a poor way. We don't want the poor function. So what happens is once this has been balanced down to three and a half bar, our cold off to our taps goes that way, and our cold down to our tank 
comes down here. Cold water enters the bottom of the tank and then in exactly the same way, uses the same kind of heat methods. We've got a coil in there for an indirect cylinder, but we've also got an immersion backup as well. When you open up your tap, cold water comes in from the main, displaces the hot water out of the top, out of the outlet, and then pressurized hot water comes out of your tap. So that's, that's the difference between a vented and unvented cylinder. Right, so the last type of cylinder we've got is this one here. I mean, for four ticks sake, it's a four tick tank. Really what it's doing is consolidating the tank in the loft and the feed and expansion all into one unit. So we've got a little tank just up here. This is where our cold water will be stored. When we open up our hot tap, cold water comes down this pipe here that's insulated in there, displaces the hot water that we've heated up inside the tank, and the hot water comes out of, oh, where's the outlet for this? comes out of here and then off to your tap. So it's a very similar thing. Now, you might wonder why we have four tick tanks. I mean, when we can have a tank in the loft, and that's great, why don't we do that? Um, the thing is, these are handy for flats where you've got no head pressure above. So say you've got two or three flats above you, you've only got a floor distance of that far. So what people tend to do is they'll install one of these with this almost touching the ceiling. So then when you open any of the taps in that said flat, water will come out. So that is the main use for these. Um, you do come across them still, they are still fairly common, especially when you've got like flat roof properties or like I just said, flat. Um, in bungalows, I mean, you sometimes get these up in the loft, but usually in a loft, you tend to have a loft tank, you know, a header tank, a feed tank, and a uh, downstairs vented cylinder. Um, also, just take notice of this here. This goes up here and just pops through a hole just through there, and that is our expansion. So everything that you get in a vented system is basically situated in a small four tick tank. That's why people like them. The problem with four tick tanks is they only have this much store of water. So if you've got a couple of teenagers who like a long bath, you know what I mean, um, they're gonna be running out of water fairly quick. <laughs> <coughs> oh, it's just so dusty in here at the moment. So effectively, when we talk about vented, unvented, and fortic tanks, we're talking about the sole way of delivering cold water to the tank to be heated and then taken off out to your taps. Vented means that it's gravity fed and that the head pressure is only defined by how high up the tank is above our outlet. Unvented is mains pressure, but then regulated through a regulating valve and balanced down to three and a half bar, usually. And four tick is all in one. It's basically the head pressure, the height of the water line in here. So now we can talk about the ways of delivering heat to these tanks. There's three main ways. Two of them are really common, one of them not so much. The three main ways are indirect, direct, and double indirect. Whew, double indirect. Don't worry guys, it only matters if you've got solar panels. So let's have a quick look. Firstly, what we'll do is look at direct because the direct one I've put in the scrapyard next door. <laughs> Let's go and have a look. Right. So we're outside the unit now where he's got the tank. Jerry will be sitting in here somewhere. Jez, I'm just going to go and show everyone the um, direct tank up there. Right, so this is the scrapyard that I've used since I was an apprentice. Haven't I? I've used you since I was, what, 16? Probably. Yeah, when I was young and virile. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so... Um, I'm just going upstairs now in my flip flops, health and safety. This is a treasure trove place as well, look at it. It's just a treasure trove of stuff. Um, but the tank that we're talking about is this one just down here. So this is a direct tank. So what a direct tank does is they usually have two immersion heaters. The reason is, is because you have a night setback immersion, which is the bottom one, and then you've got a boost one, which is the top up here. So if you suddenly want a bath during the day, you can bang the boost one on, and that'll come on for an hour and top you up some water for that bath. So the main thing is, is that we don't have a coil coming from the boiler or the heating system. The heating elements are directly supplied by our immersion heaters just down here. And that is it. That's what a direct cylinder does. This is a direct unvented one which means, boom, this can take mains pressure, but of course you can get direct unvented as well. It's very, very common to get both. In fact, every type of cylinder that we're talking about today will come in both of those ways. So that's basically it, really. So we've got a cold in at the bottom, a hot out at the top, and our heating elements are just supplied by these two immersion heaters. So let's use, I can use any of these because all of these are indirect. And that's a very important thing to think about is that a vented and an unvented cylinder and a four tick tank 
can all have the different ways of heating coming into them. That's universal across the board. All they change is the way that water's delivered to them, okay? So that's the thing. So we've got our coil in and a coil out. If we look down this hole here, we'll see that we've got a coil going around inside this cylinder. What that does is exchanges heated water from the boiler that runs through the coil and that exchanges its heat into our hot water to be used. There's no mixture of water whatsoever. It'd be very bad for you to shower and bath Ooh. in boiler water. A direct one will use just the immersion. The other thing that we want to think about when it comes to the ports that you get in and out of a tank is something called a secondary return. That's when you've got hot water outlets that are so far away, it's wasteful for you to open a tap and wait for all that water to come out before it gets hot. A secondary return makes it a lot more efficient because we're pumping water out and then back in a loop with a brass pump. It's very important that it's brass because then it won't rust because we're introducing fresh water all the time. Also, it's very important that the loop that we're pumping it out and back in is very well insulated because we don't want to be losing any of the heat of the hot water that we've spent money on heating up. So then when you open up a tap, the loop is a lot nearer that outlet hot water will come out a lot quicker and you won't be running so much water away down the drain waiting for that hot water to come out. Usually people have these on timers, they won't have them running all day, so you have a little timer for the pump. And usually you'll see here, we've got secondary return on this unvented cylinder there. So what we do, we tee off of the outlet at the top there, we'd send it off to a tap miles away with a pump, and then we'd come back in on the secondary return, which just introduces the hot water that's gone out and all the way back in, back into our cylinder, ready to be reheated and used. Very, very simple system, really, really easy to do. Another thing to think about is the different types of material you can get that especially vented cylinders are made out of. A lot of vented cylinders you're gonna come across are gonna look like that one down there and they're gonna be made of copper. And you're also gonna get some like this one here, which now I've got to say I prefer stainless steel. Um, stainless steel is a lot stronger. What I'm trying to say is, is copper is quite a soft metal. And if you've got an immersion heater that's gone, and it's been in there for 10 years, there is a time where you have to remove the immersion heater. Now you're removing a nut that's about this big, that's got hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold on a cycle for 10 years times 360 odd, which I can't remember, it's 365 days a year, isn't there? 3,650 times it's got hot. What happens when stuff gets hot and cold? We all know they tend to tighten up and really, really bite. Really hard to get them undone. If you're unlucky enough, even if you tap the immersion heater, heat it up, then try and remove it with a big set of Stilsons nice and gently, or oh. sometimes if it's a copper tank, you're gonna rip off or even just make a fissure. You won't even see it sometimes where the, where the copper has got stressed around the collar and it will start to leak. I've had it happen. Another thing to think about before we wrap up is this one here, an unvented cylinder like the one we've got behind us here, doesn't usually have all this gubbins on it. Just before we finish as well, an unvented cylinder needs certain safety things on there. We've already spoke about a balancing valve. Obviously, we don't have an expansion pipe going to the loft because remember what I've said in previous videos, when we heat up cold water to hot, molecules in the water start to get excited. They start to shake and... Uh, do I have Tourette's? I might. They start to shake and the body of water expands. So that's why we need an expansion pipe. So what we need to do is take that expansion. Now what we usually do is use an expansion vessel, just like that here. The water will go back into this expansion, up into there, and that will take the expansion. But say that fails, say the balancing valve fails, and suddenly we've got creeping up 10 bar of water. I've done videos on this before as well on high pressure relief valves. You've got one there and you've got one there. What they are is a sprung loaded rubber seat valve. And when the pressure gets up to a certain amount, it beats the spring that's on the back of the rubber seat and starts to release that pressure into a safe place, a tun dish that has 300 millimeters before the first bend. Because as we all know, because of regs out there, if you don't do that, the whole house is gonna fall down. Guys, a lot of you send us in Plum Proud and Plumbing Disasters photos. And as I've said before, in our last Plumbing Disasters video with Josh, when he came in, um, someone will do a beautiful install, post it on Instagram or on Facebook to us. We'll share it with our followers and you'll always get someone saying, oh, I don't think the Pundish has 300 mil before the first bend. 
Um, this is an awful install. So a nice and brief video today, guys. Um, we've got some massive videos coming up. A few more shower videos, because it's that time of year, and I, the, the summertime is when I like to make shower videos, because as a plumber, I know that we tend to be renovating our bathrooms and showers and stuff like that at this time of year. But also, we've got a, a full bathroom change that's happening at my house, and also we've got adding a radiator to a system as well, which is gonna be at my house. So you can see real world installs, what our thought processes are when we're doing this sort of work and how we can make a system work after we've done it. Because obviously a whole system can change when we've added a new radiator. If I've missed anything out, comment below. If you see anyone has commented below and they're asking a question and I haven't had the time to reply to them because we do get loads of comments and you're a regular viewer, comment back to them and give them a hand. This is a community and I'd like us to help each other out, okay? so. I'm sorry this has been a brief video and not like a full on instructional or an installation video. Um, like I said, we've, I've had a pooey old week really um, and I'll probably next week's not gonna be great either because I'm gonna have to go to my friend's funeral, which is not gonna be easy. But these things happen and I'm sure he'd want me to carry on teaching you about vented and unvented cylinders, wouldn't he? Um, so yeah, there we go. Anyway, thanks very much for watching guys. Hit that subscribe button. Please comment below, smash the like. Oh! and all that sort of stuff. All the usual YouTube stuff. Um, and also subscribe to us uh, over at my vlog channel, which has got a lot of history, documentaries, and also vloggy stuff. Things that, it's not your traditional vlog channel. I don't like to release videos on there until they're perfect for me. Even though the latest one, I've got a few lighting issues on it, but meh, it's one of those things. Go over there and check it out. It's called Times of James. And if you like it, subscribe. If you don't, don't subscribe. It's obvious, isn't it? Go down the fish and chip shop instead. Get yourself a battered sausage, shove it up your bum. Anyway, I'll see you later. Have a great week. And remember everyone to, oh yeah, remember as well, to send us in your good photos of plumbing stuff. If you've got an install that you're proud of, send it to us at hashtag plumproud. And if you've got an install that you found, usually while you're weeing in the pub, because pub plumbing is awful, send it to us with the hashtag plumbing disaster and always tag us at plumber parts. Have a great week guys. Thanks ever so much for watching. And I'll see you later. <coughs> Got that frog still there, innit? <coughs> Hold tight! Vented <laughs> cylinders. Undated cylinders. Indirect cylinders. Direct cylinders. Subscribe now.